Hi, in this video we will be looking at how to set up Jemmy Guitar to automatically map its volume knob to macro controls in Ableton Live. As an example, we will be using the project our friend Ange created to demo this feature. If you'd like to download this project to follow along and experiment with it, check out the first link in the description. To get the instant mapping integration to work, you need to do a few quick things. First, let's set Jemmy into Ableton Instant Mapping Mode. You can do this in the Jemmy Mobile app under Settings, Jemmy MIDI, Ableton Live Instant Mapping. If you don't see this setting, make sure the mobile app is up to date. Next, follow the second link in the description to download and unzip a folder containing a configuration file. Now, move this folder into Ableton Live's User Remote Scripts folder. Here's where you'll find it on Windows and Mac OS. After you've done this, launch Ableton Live or relaunch it if you had it running and go to Preferences, MIDI. In the drop down list of control surfaces, select Jammy. In the input and output lists, select MIDI Gadget. Turn on Track and remote. Now let's open the project to deconstruct it and see instant mapping in action. I'll start with the drum track. Down here you can see a rack with eight macro knobs, some of which have been mapped to different effects inside the rack. This little blue hand means that instant mapping is on and you can control these knobs with Jammy. When I turn the volume knob on Jammy, it moves the first one. When I press the volume knob and turn it again, now it'll control the second knob. Press it again, now I can control the third one, and so on, till I loop back to the first one. Let's take a look inside of the rack to see what these macro knobs are actually doing. We've got a 707 drum kit that's mapped to play kick on the open low E string, snare on the first fret, a closed hi-hat on the second fret and an open hi-hat on the C2 note, which is the third fret on the A string. There's a bunch of effects on the snare. There's a reverb and a gate that combine to give the snare that 80s feel and finally an echo. The dry wet parameter of the echo is mapped to macro knob number one and feedback to knob number two. There's an auto filter effect on the drums and the frequency parameter is mapped to macro number 3. If I want to map another parameter to one of the knobs, I'll click map right here, select the control and click map on the knob that I want to assign it to. You can assign multiple controls to the same knob and define how exactly the macro knob will affect each control by setting the minimum and maximum value. Moving on to the bass. It's an instrument preset called Juno Bass and as soon as you switch to this track you'll notice the blue instant mapping hand which means that Jemmy is now controlling the knobs of this rack. In the video Ange used the first knob to control the low pass filter of this synth right here. And the second macro knob to play with the resonance of this synth on top. Finally, let's take a look at the setup for our lead. It's Ableton's built-in operator synth. 
the LFO amount is mapped to knob number 2 and transpose is mapped to knob number 3. This MIDI pitch effect is used to shift all the notes up one octave. The audio signal is then treated with a glue compressor and this overdrive adds some saturation. Then there's the echo, whose feedback and delay time parameters are mapped to Jamie's accelerometer to make some feedback noise by tilting Jamie upwards. And if you turn the macro knob number one at the same time, it'll control the cutoff of this low pass filter at the end of the chain. I hope this video gives you an idea how to control a multitude of parameters in Ableton Live with your jammy using instant mapping. Download the project below, have fun with it, and post your jams on social media using hashtag PlayJammy. Stay inspired!